spoken to in a threatening manner before, but no, nothing quite that threatening. Uh, I've seen crack houses better condition than this. Did you expect Earl to be like the Ritz? There's more drugs in prison than there is on the out. Yeah, so I, that's done. All the time. Definitely pulled into this the worst prison out of the 34 prisons I've been in. No idea. Point to Molsa. This is where it really starts. Bottle of feces and urine been thrown all over the wing office. Oh, look at that. £13 on eBay, approximately £250 in there. Ben, get down! Ben, get down! You keep talking, you're going to go with a seg. Excuse us, lads. You know, society washes their hands with these guys. I don't want to do that. Basically, I kept my friend hostage. I'm sorry about this, I'm very sorry, but go with it. And she was like, what do you mean? And then I pulled out the blade. Britain's prison estate stretches from Inverness to Dartmoor. Over six months, we followed the extremes of life inside. From women's prisons... But I'm in trouble! ...young offender institutes... ...to high security jails. Come, give me your arm! Give me your arm! Friday, 1.30 p.m. Right, let's get a canteen sorted. And DHL are delivering this week's shopping for the prisoners. Keeping order is a daily struggle for the prison's officers, and canteen day can be particularly challenging. OK, come on, guys, just crack on. Basically, every week here on the Monday, you order your stuff, and then Friday it will come. The canteen's very important. If there was no canteen, trust me, there'd be riots. Every week, up to £1 million of canteen, goods and treats are ordered in by prisoners across the country. They go to work, they earn a little bit of money, and then they put their canteen sheet in and they, they buy their chocolate, you know, chocolate. They don't get chocolate as a rule in prison unless they buy it. Canteen for prisoners is probably the thing they look forward to the most. Using wages from prison jobs or money sent in from friends and family, canteen can be anything from noodles to vapes, Chocolate to shower gel. Good morning, everybody. Line up for today. Calvin, you'll be on spur three. Uh, Michelle will be on spur two. Kim, if you can jump on one for the bits that are needed. Let's just be really, really vigilant on there. Watch each other's backs. Well, let's go. Bullingdon is one of the UK's largest prisons, housing over a thousand inmates, ranging from shoplifters to murderers. For the prison's 197 officers, Canteen Day presents the toughest shift of the week. On D-Wing, senior officer Martin Brock is in charge. It's probably one of the busiest days for the wing. It has come to known as the Black Eye Friday. What that means, really, is that a lot of debt is uh, paid off today. With cash banned inside, Canteen has an even more important role in British prisons. All canteen is all currency. Do you know what I mean? Tuna, noodles, talcum powder, shower gels, whatever. You buy one, you might get two back. You buy two, you get four. Four is eight. That's it. Don't do that. You get black eye. <laughs> black eye Friday. During the week, goods are lent and borrowed. Friday is payback day, a time for paying debts and settling scores. Certain people owe people money and stuff, and if it don't come, then people get attacked and all sorts of things can happen. It's like a little business shop. 
that you all come to me for two packs of noodles today and I want four back Friday. So you double bubble out and do what? That's how you get through jail. You can't go through jail without doing that kind of stuff, you know what I'm trying to say? They're going to locate somebody in there from B Wing who has been beaten up over a packet of prison issue biscuits. Yes. Pretty much anything in a prison is a commodity. We all know debt happens in prison. It is inevitable, but we're never going to stop it. it. That's something we have to come to accept. What my goal is, is to make sure that today nobody gets hurt. With up to 200 prisoners on D Wing, Officer Brock knows that with today's delivery of Canteen, his team of five will be at full stretch. Come on, gents, behind your door for Canteen, please! And with 14 years' experience, veteran prison officer Kim Newman knows what to expect. Come on, gents, let's have you away, please! I enjoy the job, but I don't enjoy Black Eyed Friday. We don't know what's going to happen this afternoon when the canteen's issued. Yeah, so it's after three o'clock, basically. You'll hear all the shouting. With the canteen delivery on its way, Kim has to stay a step ahead of the inmates. have got a couple of minutes, lads, and then I want you behind your doors for canteen, yeah? You know your prisoners. You can, you can see what they're doing. They're getting ready to let each other know who owes who. So you have to be very vigilant there. All inmates must be in their cells and locked up before canteen's delivered. Mr Rigby, one's just gone in the shower after I told him not to. Can you just get him out, please? You get a lot of prisoners that will uh, come up to you, try and keep you busy, distract you from to keep monitoring what's going on, and it's just controlling them so he doesn't get out of hand. So if you fell through that and hurt yourself? Why would I fall this? I'm trying to see if you... Yeah, they're not safe, boo. Have you been doing drugs? It smells of weed in there. See you in a bit, lads. 2.15 p.m. Delivery deadline is approaching. Fast. The unlock is at 3 o'clock, and they've given us 45 minutes to do 200 prisoners' canteen. Staff must check and supervise delivery of every bag to each cell door. Hi, lads. Canteen. Good, miss. Thank you very much, lads. It's a long signature, sir. <laughs> You've got one bag, yeah? Yeah. Lewis has got five, yeah? Twelve bags, Mr Nelson. Right, Tesco's Express from this cell, are we? You're full, you're, you're, you're full of rubbish. <laughs> one at the bottom, yeah? The bags at the doors, some will have nine, ten bags, because they're not just earning the cells, they're having money sent in from the families. And then you've got the other uh, spectrum where they've got no family outside, they've got no job, and that's why they borrow. With any delivery service, items sometimes go astray. They have to put the lights on afterwards if there's anything wrong with the canteen. Like they're missing orders. I'll be there in a minute, sweet. Missing canteen, but he's been charged for it. Around 2,000 bags have been delivered today, and oh, officers are responsible for noting any mistakes. It's on the list, but no. I've got three bags for Lewis. one, isn't it? And it was that amount. Behind bars, a missing delivery can mean that prisoners can't settle their debts. When stuff goes missing out of that canteen, it's upsetting for them. They'll say, oh, I'll pay you back on canteen day, and then their canteen is wrong, or they haven't got enough money, or, you know, they get themselves in serious trouble. Hello, it's Senior Officer Bob on Um I'm just phoning, really, because there was a bit of an issue with canteen. People just didn't get it. Do you know where um, Mr Charles's canteen is? Can you let Can I find out what this one is at the same time? We'll go to DHL and sort everyone's canteen out, but you have to bang up. And I've got two people refusing on Spur 3 to bang up, and I've got about half a dozen prisoners without canteen. I, I genuinely, genuinely, I'm losing my faith. With more and more prisoners claiming missing canteen, it seems that debts are being settled one way or another. Can you hear me, uh, 
Are they both in there? I want the canteen and the stuff. It's putting behind his door, lads. Thank you. Two people fighting, they're both behind their doors, and I'll work out once we lock everybody up. Today's canteen day, it's Friday. It's, um, literally, it's just been given out. My pad mate got debted up. It was only like £22, so like, yeah, he was smoking um, spice and um, yeah, he obviously couldn't afford it. I, I, I paid for my stuff. Absolutely. You know, we want you to have your stuff, don't we? I just want my... Right. 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 <laughs> the floor, yeah? Yep. Worst case scenario, they get assaulted. What more worryingly, they're told to assault staff to pay their debt off. Should we stand you up? Up, 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 up. Missing canteen's a big thing. On a day like today where it's wrong and it leaves us to try and quell whatever's coming next. You guys stay here then. Kim and her team have been called in to deal with a violent inmate in his cell. Who's your mate? Kim immediately removes the man's cellmate before getting to grips with the offender. Come on, mister. All right, then, officers. You'll see. All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, listen to me. Right, we're the prisoner is subdued. But Kim has taken a blow to the head. Despite following control and restraint protocol, Kim has been knocked to the ground and is taken by ambulance to hospital. This is Dobby. There are 13 female only prisons across Britain. And that one's Princess. Set in leafy Surrey, HMP Downview is one of the largest. And Friday afternoon here has an altogether more relaxed atmosphere. This one, dangerous lady, I know it's quite figgy, but a lot of it, it's, it's based on a woman that obviously, she stood her ground, like, and when you look at her, you think she's an elegant woman, and she's always dressed nice, very polite, but get on the wrong side of her, and then it's another story. I'll connect there. Dangerous lady and repeat offender Colette O'Flaherty is serving a 20-month sentence for smashing a wine bottle over a love rival's head. I'm nearly 30 now, and I've never along the way thought to go and get a book. But since I've been here, this is my little getaway. This is 29-year-old Colette's second getaway to prison in the last few years. I've never actually done my school in, in secondary school, and I've never, not anyone around me either, is it like, I've never had someone interested in books or could like, advise me to go and get a book. Just weeks away from release, she's trying to keep her head down. I love to talk. I love to chat, I love to talk, and in, in the library, when I come here, straight away they go, oh, flatterty, and I go, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. So I have to bring my voice down and be quiet. Can I get this one out, please? Thank you. Is there any new books of Martina Cole coming out soon, do we know? She does about one a year. Oh, does she? So. Oh, OK. And that's all done for you. Lovely. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank it. you, miss. See you soon. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to the library. And I've got many girls into the library as well. Some of the girls don't like reading, and I say, listen, do you want to take make things um, occupy yourself? and take your mind out of being in prison, the best thing is a book. Many of the prisoners here are mums. To help them and their children, the prison organises seven family days a year. 
they do two a year. They do Christmas and Easter. And previously, um, for the Christmas one, I, I really thought I was going to get it, and I never. This is at Christmas. This is what I got from my little boy, I love it. And my little girl made me that. And I, I find all this precious because they're young and they're, they're so innocent little things they're making. It just shows the innocence and how young they are. Oh, no, I've not seen the kids for a good eight months. Can't go through that devastation again of not getting a family day with them. So, fingers crossed that this all comes through this time. Because, you know, I miss them. They're my babies. Time at the end of the year. Family day is a longer visit. It's just more time for them to spend with their family rather than a really quick two-hour visit. It's a bit more open. They have activities and stuff for them to do with their children. They sometimes have photo shoots. It is important because it's more natural for the kids to see their parents in that kind of situation rather than over a table. And when they get rejected, it is really upsetting for them. But with 300 inmates and only 50 family places, most prisoners will miss out. At a visit, so you're not allowed to get up, in it. But on family day, you're allowed to get up and do activities, and there's a bouncy castle and rah, rah, rah so you can spend time with... Like, I can spend time with my son, in it. I've had two visits with my little boy in six months. So, do you know what I mean? It's heartbreaking, really. It's bad news for Colette. I need to talk to my family. So if you can't give it to me, then I'm just going to jump on the phone anyway. She has not been given a family day place. Give up. Give up. Her release is only weeks away, and places have been given to prisoners serving longer sentences. My kids are missing out on mummy. And then, I'm so sorry that I'm not there. You've, been, you've tried to call them numerous times today. I've seen you do this, and I appreciate that it must be frustrating, but you can't be them getting yourself in trouble and displaying negative behaviour. I'm finding it harder and harder to pick the phone up, harder and harder to look at the pictures. As a mummy, that breaks my heart, you know, because you're never going to get them days back again. There's a prison-wide alert. Colette has taken matters into her own hands and taken a fellow prisoner hostage. Distraught at missing out on a place at family day, Prisoner Colette O'Flaherty has taken a fellow inmate hostage and sparked a prison-wide alert. I kept my friend hostage at Knife Point, and I said to her when I went in there, look, I love you, I'm sorry about this, I'm very sorry, but go with it. And she was like, what do you mean? And then I pulled out the blade. The segregation unit is reserved for the most violent and disruptive prisoners. Do you understand why you're here? I do, miss, yeah. OK. I do, yeah. But yesterday was quite a blur for me. It's, it's gone over a couple of weeks, really. I've been deteriorating bit by bit, like little things have been happening. <laughs> yesterday I had enough, I just couldn't cope no more with everything. I'm in four walls and I can't I control nothing. I'm, not, I'm in, in a pickle that I don't want to be in. Yeah. Taking a fellow prisoner hostage can mean a severe punishment. The emotions just hit the roof, don't they? They do, miss. They did yesterday for me, yeah, really bad. I hurt myself yesterday because it was the only thing that I could do without getting nicked or getting in trouble for. And I was in a lot of pain yesterday. Two thirds of prisoners will self harm while inside. And female prisoners are four times more likely to do it than men. But we're here for you. You're yeah. always asked to speak to one of us. Just six weeks away from release, Colette may now face an additional lengthy spell inside. Britain sends more people to jail than any other country in Western Europe. 
What the fuck? Did you expect Earl to be like the Ritz? Obviously, crack house is better in condition than this. There are over 140,000 admissions every year. We have got space. Where is he racist? On average, 1,600 prisoners are transferred between establishments each week. Is he hygienic? Oh, for Christ's sake. And staff are under pressure like never before. Portland Prison on the coast of Dorset was built in 1848. It holds around 500 prisoners. And today, there's a new arrival. Oh, ah, yeah. Yes. Right, see you later, right? yes. 24-year-old prisoner Justin Millington has been transferred from HMP Park in Wales, and he comes with a reputation. I'm quite, like, outspoken. I'm, I don't really hold my tongue. Like, I just say it how it is, isn't it? And obviously some people just don't like that. You end up fighting 15 or 20 of them all trying to jump all over your head. <laughs> and I'm just one of them people. I always attract bad company or problems. Millington's new home is Drake Wing one of the toughest of Portland's seven wings. It houses 80 inmates, ranging from petty thieves to lifers. You've got prisoners that have got mental health problems, prisoners that are violent. You've got to be on your guard all the time. You just don't know when the next fight's going to break out. Bigger and better, isn't it, than the last. Because it's more open plan as well, a bigger wing. So obviously, it's a bit better for me, to be fair. So I've been doing jail now since I was, like, what, 12 years old? You know, as a shoplifter, started robbing, you know, just stupidness with mates. Then I just started, started burgling, robbing cars, started doing, like, street robberies. You all right, mate? Yeah. Millington isn't the only new boy on Drake Wing. Oi! What? Fucking door opened up. Good move this morning. Former stonemason Mike Crocker is a rookie officer Fresh from a 10-week training course. Hey, mate, you're right. <laughs> having a week. Today, just four weeks into the job, he's part of a three-strong team responsible for keeping the inmates on the wing in line. If I can, if I can, I've got about ten people asking for a favour. Just literally non-stop question, question, question. Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Do this, do this, do this. Can you give me a bucket? A bucket of what? Like the bucket, like the I'll try. If, if I can't, then no, but I'll try. What they forget is there's 80 other prisoners on the uh, on the wing asking for the same thing. I, mean, I don't know. I'm new. I'm new. There aren't many jobs, if any, that can really prepare you for this sort of experience. Training doesn't pay for this. Yeah, it doesn't. This is where it really starts. You can't predict what's going to happen. Officer Crocker's not the only one trying to make a name for himself. On a wing where fights are frequent and status is everything. The men are like bitches. They talk more than women. Like, I'm sorry, but that's what they are. They're like, the bitch about each other. One day, uh, this, this man's my friend. But and then, two days later, I find out he's been bitching about me. The lowest status in prison is claimed by Britain's 14,000 sex offenders. Millington's heard that someone on the wing is spreading false rumours that he's a sex offender. He's decided that someone is newbie officer Mike Crocker. Oh, you look at all, boy, Did you not? Excuse me. I'm going to ask you a question now. I'm going to ask you a question. You're putting me on nuts. Are you running around the room? Putting me on nuts. I'm asking you, look how wide you are. Did you or did you not? Why are you raising your hand? Because you're a pussy. Did you or did you not? Did you or did you not? I've got about 10 prisoners telling you, dude. You're taking a piece. Don't judge me. You're a little dickhead. You're a little dickhead. You're a pussy. You're a little dickhead. You're a little dickhead. No, don't come around and talk. I'm slapping. One of the prisoners thinks I've been called him a nonce or something. I've got no idea where that's come from. No idea at all. But 
wherever that's, I, I don't know what he's even on about, to, be, to tell the absolute truth, no idea. Millington, Justin. There he is, sticking him. Every hour across the country, a prison officer is attacked. They knew something was going to happen. That's why Pearson walked off, just to clear it. Sudden flare-ups are common, but more sinister attacks on officers are planned and coordinated amongst inmates. The then, the whole of the freeze landing, it's just great. I've noticed that all the cameras had been covered. Um, they would have covered the cameras because obviously they were going to do something and they wouldn't, want it, wouldn't have wanted that to have been filmed. If it weren't for Officer Sword noticing them cameras, I would have walked straight into a booby trap up there. Because he had it planned out, obviously. Like, that could have been... Um, it's possibly potting. If you get potted, mate, welcome to the potting club. Yeah, I'm in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've been potted. I was potted in my first three months, being a prison officer. So I had faeces and urine chucked in my face. Yeah, it was awful. And it does affect you mentally. Massively affects you. It's just part of the job, really, being abused and threatened. Officer Crocker's safety is now seriously at risk. I had an idea, yeah, of we, maybe two officers who maybe, if anything, who didn't like me, yeah, would maybe say this shit. He's always at the door shouting threats out to people, I'm going to do your family and all that. Yeah, it's a few times he's done that now. But I can't have him on the wing if he's going to start threatening me and my family like that. When I then said to this person, is it this officer? The person's expression on their face basically said, listen, you hit the nail on the head. And basically, you give me the nail and tell me, listen, you, you, you bang on, yeah? If I'm honest, a bit of a reality check. I, well, I knew these are the situations you, you could potentially be fronted up with. You can see in his body language that you know, the keys as a liar, plain face liar. You can just see it and you can see the guilt I've all written all over his face. Everyone said it. Everyone. <laughs> to the point where I'm having to come shower with a big news yeah, like this, yeah, to just make sure no one's coming for me. It's roll call on D-Wing, 12 p.m. We get this right every day except Friday, so our numbers need to be in now. Guys, who did Spur 2, Level 2? So what, what have you got? So you got one DHL, the one, one DHL, DHL one. So have we got 55 on Spur 1 total? Yeah. Lovely. Let's go and tick off who our prayers are coming out, and then we, at least we, we're ready for that. What were you saying this morning? Who were you saying was going to murder me today? We do have challenging prisoners on D-Wing. You don't come in with rose-tinted glasses on. You know that, you know, we're dealing with very volatile individuals, and at any point you could get injured. It's over a week since Officer Kim Newman was injured during a violent restraint. Oh, shit. It's not what we come to work for. Unfortunately, sometimes it does happen in the job. Friday is the Islamic Day of Worship. Officer Michelle Knight must escort D-Wing's Muslim prisoners to prayer. So, who have you got? You're under the influence. You can't go to prayers like that. Or you're not... You're off your head. I don't, I don't think you should go to prayers. He's been under the influence since about 8 this morning. You're not going? No, you're not. If they're under the influence, you don't allow them to go to prayers or to work or anything. So now I have to go back and I have to place them on report. Any prisoner found under the influence of alcohol or drugs goes straight on report and faces extra time added to their sentence. He seems a bit cheeky and chappy. Turns out he was drunk. This is Hooch, brewed in HMB Bullingdon. Probably antibacterial hand gel, some fruit, some yeast. You can see the bread floating about on it. The bread at the bottom, you've got Hooch. Hooch production is on the rise at Bullingdon with officers seizing around five to 10 litres a week. With things like hooch, the same as drugs, that can lead to, to violence, and violence can potentially lead to staff being assaulted. So I'm not going to let this one go. Oh, 
unhappy hour is about to break out on D-Wing. Can you let know who is under the influence of Pooch? William Goffert, who's serving two years for GBH, is refusing to bang up and resisting restraint. It falls to his key worker, Michelle, to help get him under control. Michelle is the second female officer D Wing has lost in just over a week. There's no respect for female staff where there used to be. It's like a new era of prisoner. They're challenging, they're difficult, they're, they're, they're rude, they're abusive. There's just no respect. Fuck this. Thank you. Have a seat, Mr. Goffert. I'm Miss Price. Good morning. The morning after the night before, sober William Goffert is in front of an adjudicating governor. You have been charged with being intoxicated as a consequence of consuming any alcoholic beverage. Do you understand the charge? Yeah. yeah. Governor William Goffert approached the centre office. He was unsteady on his feet and smelt of alcohol. At this point, I told William to go back to his cell. However, he said, fuck that, I'm not moving. He then pushed back against staff and was restrained. OK, how are you pleading? I'm guilty. Guilty, OK. OK, do you want to tell me why that happened? Everything's got on top of me, really. I've had the opportunity to have a drink, I've had the drink, so I've ended up being drunk. And yeah, so, man, it's a mistake that won't happen again. Gonna... Goffert gets three days in the segregation unit and 21 days loss of privileges. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. But for Officer Michelle Knight, the consequences are more serious. Hi, yes, Sarah, are you all right? She's what? How did she punch her along? Oh, my God, I didn't know that. Like, in that restraint yesterday with Goffet, yeah. Michelle Knight got her lung punctured Bloody and hell. she's still in hospital. It's two days since Colette O'Flaherty sparked a prison-wide alert by taking a fellow inmate hostage. Okay, right, so we have three charges. Ms. O'Flaherty refused to attend to her cell following several instructions from staff to do so. This was during an incident in which she had a blade in her possession and informed staff that she has taken Ms. Carter hostage. Thank you. Do you agree with that statement? Sort of. But I have to explain what's the matter with me to led to that, though. I've been in this jail since October. Never had a job. Seven months behind the door. I had bad anxiety over it. Then they put a slip under my door, for, not for family day, so, yeah? And my, my whole heart was for this family day. And they just put it under my door, never got it again. No one come to speak to me, no one come nothing. And that broke me because now I've got to wait longer. Sorry, I'm going to get emotional, sorry. So I need to see my kids. I'm giving you tissues. I feel like I owe it to my kids. Right. I thought family day's coming, I'll be able to make it up to him. And I had it all planned in my little brain. You should have been told why, all right? And it shouldn't have just been stuck under your door. And if that's the sequence of events that have happened, I apologise, because that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, thank all you. Right? The duty governor's concerned about the incident and Colette's mental health. You self harm before? No, never. What did you do? Um, I cut my neck and then just cut my arm. Some just rock bottom, there's no, no, no lower, I can go, sir, this is it. 
The sequence of events as you said them bother me. For someone to, as you suggested, be in such a position of distress and hopelessness that you have to self-harm, yeah. that worries me. The charges are quite serious, um, but I don't think it's appropriate to continue with the adjudication at the moment. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you, folks. Thank you, sir. All right. The decision's deferred, and Colette's taken back to the segregation unit, where there's lots of time to reflect. Do you know what today is? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah. Family day. What is this? There you go, thank you. Ooh. I'm a girl that can't deal with answering to my children why I'm here. You know, I find it hard. I've been waiting for this day for so long. The fact that I've never got a chance. And then there's, a, there's a little bit of jealousy in there as well. I feel a little bit jealous. But at least I'm out of the way of it. I don't get to see the ladies come back with all, all their little gifts and the buzzing happy faces. Family day is rehabilitation. But I never know, so it's all I've been done with for me. A third of all assaults in Britain's jails are against prison staff. Up 16% in a year. One in 16 officers quit the service last year alone. Stop them! I don't want them searched! But today, a familiar face is back on D-Wing. It's been just over two weeks since Officer Kim Newman was injured trying to restrain a prisoner. It's my job. It's, it's what I do. I, I really enjoy the work. Nobody's keeping me away. No angry man. Walking back onto the unit through these walls makes me a bit nervous. But I'm here to do a job, and that's what I'm going to do. Kim's not the only notable return. Michelle, who did you speak to? After recovering from a punctured lung, Michelle Knight is also back at work. All right, thank you. OK, bye. Right, let's go and do this. And straight back into action. Your pap mate has been uh, caught with stuff he shouldn't have. <laughs> so they've got a hidey hole in there and one in there. No matter what you're feeling inside, you've just got to be resilient. You know, move forward and just don't look back. <laughs> For Michelle, being back on D-Wing means coming face to face with the inmate responsible for her injuries, William Goffert. I like Miss Knight. I, I get along with her. She's a good member of staff. I've written her a letter of apologies. If she don't accept my sorry, there's not much else I can do, but I hope she does. So how have you been? It's been all right, man. Yeah, it's not really happened in the past. Yeah, we just start a fresh and move forward. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did say in there that, you know, he never wanted to hurt me or it wasn't intentional. He's apologised. I think it's very important to kind of process what happened and try and forgive and move on. Keep my head down. Yeah. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, miss. Yeah. Right. See you later. Cheers, Cheers. On D-Wing, an argument breaks out in a cell, and Kim is responding to her first incident since returning. Is that what you wanted to talk to me? Yeah. 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 OK. I know the prisoner. He trusts me. So we had a little chat. And I'm with him. The sleeping's calming him down. It'll be all right. It takes a long time to calm him down, but when he does calm down, he's pretty good. It's back to business as usual for Kim. And she's taking no prisoners. Excuse me, you're not good.
good looking enough to be on camera, so shut up. A lot of them haven't had any nurturing. No kind words. They've always been told they're useless. They're not going to have a mate to anything. You're big enough to apologise when you're in the wrong, OK? You've heard me apologise to prisoners, right? Don't make me a weak woman, does it? Society washes their hands with these guys. I don't want to do that. I want to show them they've still got a chance in life. They're still young. They can be something. So start thinking outside the box and who the person you really want to be. And it's getting them to trust you, getting, and so you can help them. And that's what I do best.